we're making a train station. First, you're going to open up a project in Blender and delete that basic cube. Then we're going to use the images as planes add-on to add on a picture of train tracks from above. Now, if you don't have this add-on turned on, you can turn it on in the preferences under images as planes. Okay, rotate that train track 90 degrees so we can see it in the top-down view. Now in the edit mode, we're going to add in some edge loops all along the railroad ties and rails. This is going to make it so that we can cut out everything that's not a tie or a rail once we've added in all the edge loops. Okay, so some of these vertices are a little bit off, but you can fix that by double clicking G and sliding those vertices and double clicking G allows you to move the vertices without interrupting the texture data. Um, now we're going to just go through and select everything that's not a tie or a rail. Okay, press X and delete those faces. And now we have a pretty good start on our train tracks. You can Alt E and extrude along normals. And now you'll notice we have a weird instance where it's showing through. So if you go to the shader editor and scroll down in the material preferences, turn off uh, show back face and now it looks more normal. Okay, select the top of the rails and extrude them up. Now we're going to turn on individual origins so that we can scale on the X to scale in and scale out to make that nice rounded shape. You'll notice now that there's some stretching. So if we go to the UV editor, we can select everything that's not the top of the rail by alt clicking, pressing shift. And now we can U cube project. Now we can line this up with the rail and our UV looks much nicer for the rails. Um, there's a similar issue happening for the ties. So I'm just going to go through alt shift selecting and select all the loops of faces that are on the sides and U cube project. I'm going to rotate this, scale it down and just scale it where it looks nice. And then I'm going to just bevel all those edges to give it just a little bit more realism. In the shader editor, I'm going to tweak a few settings like turning down the specular to make the image look a little bit better. And now we have our train tracks. So we can add in an array modifier in the modifier tab. And now our train tracks can keep going. Perfect. For the train platform, I have this image that I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to add in a cube and I'm going to rename it station. I'm just going to go into the edit mode and scale it down till it looks nice. And I'm just going to drag it over next to the train tracks and just scale it around till it looks kind of the length of a segment of train station. Um, in the shader editor, I'm just going to add in an image texture and I'm going to open that picture of the train station I had. You'll notice it looks all weird right now. So I'm just going to select the top face and cube project it. And I'm just going to scale it down and place it in this nice open place down here. And I'm going to just tweak the edges so it kind of fits the shape of the station. And that looks pretty good like that actually. Perfect. Okay, for the sides, I'm going to Alt Shift select them all, U cube project, and scale them down onto a place where they look nice. Okay, we're going to make that yellow strip now. So Shift D, the top face, scale it down, slide it over, Alt E, extrude along normals, and give it a tiny little bevel. Now, I'm going to select the whole thing and U project from view. Now, I'm going to kind of line it up with the yellow band, and that looks pretty good already. Okay, perfect. Now in edit mode, I'm going to add in another cube. I'm going to scale it down, place it kind of in the middle and uh, scale it along the Z to give it some length. This is going to be our pillar. Now, once I get the scaled appropriately, I'm going to UQ project. And unfortunately, this got projected outside of the image, but that's okay. We can just scale them down and scale them along the pillar. Now, annoying thing happens here where some of the faces are reversed, which makes sense. Um, you can fix that really easily by selecting those faces and in the UV editor pressing S, X, negative 1. Perfect. Now I'm going to go through and select all those edges and bevel them just a little bit. More realism! Slide this pillar over and Shift D to duplicate it and bring it to the other end of the station. We're going to add some edge loops here so we can just add some different details and we're going to select those new faces and scale them down onto something else on a different pillar. 
For the ceiling, we're going to shift D that bottom plane and slide it up to the top of the pillar. We're going to Alt E, extrude along normals, select everything, cube project, rotate this over and slide them all together. Uh, scale it down and place it on a nice place on the ceiling. Okay, it's a little bit dark, so we're going to add in some more edge loops and just make some more of them perfect and add another one going the other way so now we have these sections I'm gonna select all the sections on the bottom face double click I to inset them all and then alt E extrude them up make sure individual origins is on and scale them in now I'm gonna select those faces and U cube project them I'm gonna put them all together this takes a minute but that's okay and I'm just gonna find a nice place to line them all up so that we have some different colors on the ceiling I'm gonna do the same thing for these interior faces here just so it's not as stark of a difference I'm gonna line them up again Ugh, wish this was faster there probably is a faster way I don't know put them somewhere nice that looks good okay we're done we're gonna make these nice little uh, metal poles going along the ceiling so I'm just gonna take one of these faces and shift D it scale it in scale it out a little bit alt E extrude down select all the edges give them a nice bevel so it's a little bit rounds and we're gonna shift D and duplicate it around the ceiling okay that actually looks surprisingly good now we're gonna make this little box on this pillar here so I'm gonna shift D this face bring it up extrude it out and I'm gonna select the whole thing and just give it a little bevel perfect um, now I'm gonna select the top face and shift D it in shift D it in again so it's about square I'm gonna extrude it up along normals I'm gonna select all those edges and just give it a little bitty bevel Perfect. Now I'm going to make those rings that kind of hold it in place. So I'm going to shift D this again, scale it down so it's very thin. Um, I'm going to bring it out so I can see it better. I'm going to delete these faces on the inside. I am then going to select the whole thing, drag it back, scale it out a little bit. I'm going to select these edges here so that it actually makes contact with the wall because that's important. We don't want it floating. Uh, extrude it into the wall, select the whole thing, Alt E to extrude along normals, and now it has some thickness, but it's too wide. So scale it in a little bit. Perfect. Now we can select this and just Shift D it and put it along the wall. Now it looks like it's being held in place. Okay, select all of those, shift D them, and just bring them over to the other side of the pillar. Now we're gonna rotate this 90 degrees and just line it up. If you have any problems rotating, it's probably because individual origins is still on. Now we're gonna make those nice lights on the ceiling. So I'm gonna add in a cylinder and I'm going to just scale it down because if you haven't noticed, this project is not to scale. Okay, slide it so it's about in the middle of everything and delete all the faces besides the bottom face. Now I'm going to extrude it up, scale it in, extrude it up, scale it in, extrude it up, scale it in, extrude it up, extrude it up, and scale it out. Extrude it up, extrude it up, and scale it in, and extrude it up one last time. Perfect. Grab the bottom face, I to inset, I'll eat, extrude it up again, and scale that in. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to take the whole thing and cube project it and just put it up. Oh and it's all over the place again all right now we're just gonna put it all on the cement to give it kind of a nice gray however the whole thing looks too sharp so just select some of those very sharp edges and we're just gonna give it a little bitty bevel that looks much better all right select that face at the bottom and go to the material tab we're gonna add in a new material assign it to that face and press new this is gonna be our light change from a principal shader to an emission shader we're gonna change the color to a bit of an orange and crank up the strength okay now in cycles that's looking pretty good but I'm gonna make it a little bit more orange duplicate that light over and that looks great now we're gonna make the station bigger add in an array modifier and whoopsies that's going the wrong way but we can fix that reverse the X and Y and now that's looking pretty good now we can make our station as long as we want now we're going to make the bottom where the train goes. So duplicate that top face yet again and bring it down and bring it over. Okay, I want to give this a tiny little slope up to the station. So I'm going to select this edge here and E extrude it up and slide it over. And that looks pretty nice. All right. 
So that's looking pretty good right now. Um, the model is not to scale whatsoever, but that's okay. For the sake of this, this is fine. With the array modifier, you can make this as big as you want to, so that's great. Okay, I'm gonna align my camera to view here, and I'm just gonna render an image, and I'm gonna go over to the compositor and enable use nodes, and I'm gonna add in a glare node, and then I'm gonna add in another glare node and turn that to fog low. For the first glare node, turn up the color modulation, and I like to turn Turn this to 45 degrees here. Now I'm going to add in a lens distortion and I'm going to put it on projector and I'm going to really turn up the dispersion. All right, I'm going to duplicate that lens distortion and change it to fit and make the distort and dispersion 0.02. With the node wrangler add on enabled, you can control shift click on the lens distortion and that will bring up a viewer node. And now now you can see your full render with all the after effects on it and that looks great. All right, so that does it for the video for today. Um, I plan to do a future one where I show how to make a train and how to add the train into the station and some tips to make it look good and stuff like that, you know, and how to animate a train moving and stuff like that. But we'll get to that later. I hope you all enjoyed the video today and that this wasn't too fast paced because I kind of geared this towards people who already have some knowledge of how to use Blender, but I plan to do some more simple ones in the future. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and goodbye.